Okay, in this lecture we're going to cover our section 12.4 material on implicit differentiation. Um, so thus far, uh, most of the functions which we've been considering uh, can be expressed in terms of one variable explicitly in terms of the other variable. Um, so the functions that we've been considering can be written as y equals some function of x, uh, where we have y explicitly, or we've solved for y. However, there are some functions uh, which describe a relationship between quantities which are defined implicitly by some relation between the variables x and y. So as a couple of examples, we could consider uh, maybe the equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared is 25, um, or uh, the equation x squared minus xy plus y cubed is equal to 8. Um, so these are examples of what are called implicitly defined functions, uh, where it may not be uh, very easy to solve for y explicitly. So in particular, the second equation uh, illustrates that it, uh, if we were wanting to find the derivative of y, we would have to uh, thus far solve for y explicitly. Um, but because y is a, uh, or our equation involves y cubed, uh, it gets to be a little difficult to solve for y there. And there are some examples where it might be impossible to solve for y in terms of x. So for these sort of implicitly defined functions, the question is, how can we find uh, the derivative of y with respect to x? Um, so let's introduce the idea uh, by looking at some examples. So in this first example, we're going to consider uh, the equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared equals 25. Um, so geometrically, this is... Uh, this equation describes a circle um, centered at the origin of the xy plane uh, with a radius of 5. So it goes from negative 5 to positive 5 along that uh, x-axis. So in part a of this example, uh, we're told to sol uh, solve for y explicitly and then find the derivative of y with respect to x. Um, so if we have the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 25, then we could solve for y by trying to isolate y. So we could take uh, y squared is equal to 25 minus x squared, if we subtract x squared from both sides. And then y, if I take the square root of both sides, could be either positive or negative of the square root of 25 minus x squared. Um, so geometrically, the, the positive and negative values for y uh, correspond to the upper half of the circle. So this upper half circle where y is above the x-axis uh, would be the positive square root of 25 minus x squared. And then the lower half of this circle where y is negative, that is where we lie below the x-axis, uh, would be the negative square root of 25 minus x squared. Um, so to illustrate our example, um, let's suppose uh, that we work with the positive square root to start with, say y is uh, the positive square root of 25 minus x squared. Uh, if we, or if we prefer, uh, we can write this as 25 minus x squared to the one-half power. Um, so if we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x, uh, using the chain rule, we would have half of 25 minus x squared to the negative one-half times the derivative of the inside function which would be negative 2x. So we would have, uh, for our product of 1 half and negative 2x, uh, a negative x. 
And then the term that we're left with, 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, is the same as division by the square root of 25 minus x squared. Or we can rewrite this as negative x divided by y, because here y was the positive square root of 25 minus x squared. So just rewriting our denominator as y, we have the derivative is negative x divided by y. Now let's uh, see what happens if we were to take the negative square root. So if y was the negative square root of 25 minus x squared, or equivalently the negative of 25 minus x squared to the 1 half power, then our derivative of y with respect to x is negative 1 half of 25 minus x squared raised to the negative 1 half power times the derivative of the inner function, which is again negative 2x. So we have, again for the product of negative 1 half and negative 2x, a positive x, and then our 25 minus x squared to the negative 1 half is the same as division by the square root of 25 minus x squared, which is exactly the negative of x over y. Now where does this negative come from? Well, in this uh, second case, our denominator is the positive uh, square root of 25 minus x squared, but y was the negative of that value. So the positive square root that we have in our denominator is actually the negative of y. So that's where that negative is coming from. Um, so here we find that the derivative of y with respect to x is given by the negative of x divided by y. So in part b of this example, uh, we're asked to find the equation of the tangent line to this circle at the point 3, 4. All right. Um, so we need two things to find the equation of a tangent line uh, or any line. We need a point that it passes through, which we're given in the problem, the point 3, 4. And we need the slope of our line. Uh, now the slope of our tangent line is the derivative dy dx, which was uh, negative x divided by y. So for the point 3, 4, we have negative 3 fourths for our slope. So now that we have a point in the slope of our line, we can use the point slope form for the equation of a line. And we have y minus 4 is equal to negative 3 fourths times x minus 3. Or simplifying, we have y minus 4 is negative 3 fourths x plus 9 fourths. So solving for y, if we add 4 to both sides, we have y is negative 3 fourths x. Uh, and then let's see, we had 9 fourths plus 4, which is 16 fourths. So altogether, 25 fourths. So this first example illustrates that uh, for the equation of a circle, um, where we had an implicitly defined function, uh, we could maybe solve for y explicitly and then find the derivative uh, using the techniques that we've already learned from chapter 11. So let's consider another approach um, to illustrate our idea for this section. So I'll mention it is possible to find the derivative of y with respect to x without solving explicitly for y. So the idea is to use a method called implicit differentiation and this method is described uh, as follows. If we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x by implicit differentiation, there's two steps. Our first step 
is to differentiate both sides of the given equation with respect to x. And we have to remember to use the chain rule throughout this process because y is being considered as a function of x here. So any terms that involve y, uh, we've got to make sure to apply the chain rule to since y is dependent on x. And whatever equation we get after differentiating, uh, we then solve uh, for dy dx, or the derivative of y with respect to x. Um, so to illustrate how this process works and uh, to show that we would get the same answer uh, that we have if we solve explicitly, let's again consider the equation of the circle, x squared plus y squared is 25, and we want to find the derivative of y with respect to x. Um, so here, differentiating uh, the expression x squared plus y squared, but uh, to introduce this concept, okay, I'm going to use the following notation. Recall that y is a function of x, so everywhere that I have y, let me replace it by y of x, uh, to remind ourselves that it is a function of x squared, is equal to 25. So differentiating this expression uh, with respect to the variable x, we have the following. So on our left-hand side, we start with the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. Then we're adding the derivative of this function, y of x, quantity squared. So this is really a composite function here, a function buried inside of another function. So when we differentiate, we've got to use the chain rule. We start by differentiating the outer function. So we would have 2 times y of x to the first power. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of this inside function. Now the derivative of y with respect to x is what we call dy dx. And then this is equal to, on the right hand side, we had a constant 25. The derivative of any constant is 0. All right. So rewriting this, we have 2x plus 2. And instead of writing y of x, let me just replace it by y itself. Um, as it was stated in the original problem, uh, times dy dx is equal to zero. And now after we've differentiated, our second step in this method is to solve for dy dx. So here I could subtract 2x from both sides, and I have 2y dy dx is equal to negative 2x. So then to solve for dy dx, I would divide both sides by 2y, and I have negative 2x over 2y, or canceling a factor of 2 on top and bottom, I have negative x divided by y. And recall that was the exact same expression that we had for the derivative when we solved for y explicitly. But here, uh, by using this idea of implicit differentiation, uh, we got that derivative uh, much easier. So this is the idea behind implicit differentiation. If we have a function y, uh, which is defined uh, in terms of x by an implicit equation, that is an equation where uh, we don't have y equals a function of x, uh, then we can use this process uh, to find our derivative. So let's look at some more examples. In our next problem, we're again told to find uh, the derivative of y with respect to x given the following equation. Um, so this equation involving x and y is impossible to solve for y. So I'll mention here this cannot be 
solved uh, for y. So we have to use implicit differentiation if we want to know how uh, the variable y changes uh, with respect to a change in the variable x, that is if we want our derivative. So <clears throat> as with our first example, uh, we need to differentiate both sides of this equation. Um, so I'll start by saying, well, let's differentiate Uh, with respect to the variable x. So on our left-hand side of this equation, our first term was e to the 9x squared, which is a composite function, so we have to use the chain rule. So recall that the derivative of e raised to some function of x is e raised to that same function of x, and then we multiply by the derivative of this inner function. So the derivative of 9x squared is 18x. Then we're subtracting, our next term is e to the y. Uh, now remember that y is actually a function of x here. Um, so we've got to use the chain rule to differentiate this. Again, the derivative of e raised to a function would be e raised to that same function, y, but then we have to multiply by the derivative of that inner function. And that's what we're after, the derivative of y with respect to x. Now this is equal to, on our right-hand side, uh, the derivative of 5x is simply 5, and then plus the derivative of 6y to the 10th, we'll remember y is actually a function of x here. Um, so we've got to use the chain rule when we differentiate. So we would have 60 times y to the 9th power, but then we have to differentiate uh, or multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is uh, the derivative of y with respect to x. So after we differentiate, uh, our goal is to solve for this derivative, dy dx. So in this expression, I, or in this example, I have dy dx appearing in two places. Uh, so I'm going to group all of the terms involving that dy dx on one side of the equation. Uh, let's say the right-hand side. We'll move this across. Uh, so my left-hand side is 18x uh, times e to the 9x squared. Uh, and then my all of the terms that don't involve uh, the derivative, uh, so namely this 5, I'm going to group on the other side of my equation. So I'll subtract 5 from both sides. Um, so I have this 18x e to the 9x squared minus 5 is equal to, if I add my e to the y, dy dx to both sides. I have e to the y dy dx plus uh, my 60y to the ninth dy dx. And now on this right hand side, now that I've grouped all the derivative terms together, I see I can factor out a dy dx and I'm left with e to the y plus 60y to the ninth. And my left-hand side is still 18x e to the 9x squared minus 5. So in my last step to solve for dy dx, well, I just need to divide both sides by this factor that was being multiplied by dy dx. So I have an 18x e to the 9x squared minus 5, uh, where the negative 5 is not in the exponent, uh, over e to the y plus 60 times y to the ninth power. So here I have an expression for the derivative of y with respect to x, even though I was not able to solve for y explicitly. So let's look at some other examples, get a lot of practice with this uh, idea.
So our next problem is the same. We want the derivative of y with respect to x given the following equation. Um, so again, we start by differentiating. Uh, with respect to x. So let's see what we have on our left-hand side of the equation. Uh, we have 3x squared times y to the 7th. Or we can really think about this as 3x to the 6th uh, times y of x to the 7th power. So to differentiate that expression, well, we're multiplying two functions, so I'm going to have to use the product rule. And uh, since I have y of x to the seventh, that is a composite function, I'm also going to have to use the chain rule. Um, so on the left-hand side, using the product rule, we first take the derivative of our first function, 3x to the sixth, which would be 18x to the fifth, and then I leave the second function alone. I've got y to the seventh. Then I add my first function, 3x to the sixth, uh, left alone. And then I multiply by the derivative of the second function, y of x to the seventh, uh, which would be 7y to the sixth. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. That is the derivative of y with respect to x. Uh, now this is equal to, on our right-hand side, we have 5y squared. Uh, or really, we should think about this as 5 times y as a function of x squared. So I've got to use the chain rule on that right-hand side. So here we would have 10 times y to the first power times the derivative of that inner function, y with respect to x. So simplifying a little, we have 18x to the fifth, y to the seventh, uh, plus, for the second term, uh, I've got 3x to the sixth uh, times 7y to the sixth. So that product would give me 21x to the 6th, y to the 6th. And then I still have my factor of dy dx. And this is equal to 10y times dy dx. So as with the last example, after I differentiate both sides, uh, I want to solve for the derivative, dy dx. So I'm going to move all of the terms involving the derivative to one side of my equation, maybe the right-hand side. And I would be left with 18x to the fifth, y to the seventh, is equal to uh, 10y times dy dx. And then I subtract the 21x to the sixth, y to the sixth, dy dx, uh, from both sides to move it to the right-hand side. And now on this right-hand side, once I've got all of the terms involving the derivative grouped, I can factor out a dy dx, and I'm left with dy dx times 10y minus 21x to the sixth, y to the sixth. So finally, solving for dy dx, well, I can just divide both sides by this factor that was being multiplied by dy dx. And I have 18x to the fifth, y to the seventh, all over 10y minus 21x to the sixth, y to the sixth. All right. So let's look at another one. Uh, here we're asked to find... Uh, the derivative of y with respect to x at the point 1, 1, uh, given the following uh, equation relating x and y. Um, so again, in this example, it is impossible to solve for y in terms of x explicitly, so we have to rely on implicit differentiation. Uh, so let's take a look at this. As with our earlier examples, our first step is to differentiate to 
differentiating <laughs> uh, with respect to um, x, let's see what we have. Uh, so our first term on this left-hand side of the equation is a product. We can think about this as x squared times e to the 1 minus y, which is a function of x. So to differentiate that term, we're going to have to use the product rule, since we're multiplying two functions, and the chain rule, uh, since we have a composite function. So on the left-hand side, using the product rule, we start by taking the derivative of our first function, x squared, which is 2x, and then we multiply by the second function, left alone, e to the 1 minus y. Then we add the product of our first function, left alone, x squared, uh, and the derivative of our second function. So we have e to the 1 minus y, uh, would be its own derivative, and then we multiply by the derivative of the inner function. So the derivative of 1 minus y is going to be negative dy dx. And this is equal to, on our right-hand side, uh, differentiating, we have 4y for the derivative of 2y squared, but then using the chain rule, we've got to multiply by the derivative of y with respect to x, and then minus 1, well, the derivative of any constant is 0. So now, simplifying a little, we have 2x times e to the 1 minus y uh, minus x squared e to the 1 minus y times dy dx. And this is equal to 4y dy dx. So as with our earlier examples, let's group all of the terms involving our derivative dy dx on one side of the equation, say the right-hand side. And we have 2x e to the 1 minus y is equal to uh, 4y dy dx plus our x squared e to the 1 minus y dy dx. So once we've grouped all of the terms involving dy dx on one side of our equation, we can factor out a dy dx. And that leaves us with 4y plus x squared times e to the 1 minus y. So in our last step, solving for dy dx, we divide both sides by this factor uh, that was being multiplied by our derivative. So that gives us a 2x e to the 1 minus y all over 4y uh, plus x squared times e to the 1 minus y. Okay. So let's look at, uh, oh, and let's see. Um, so here, not quite done. Uh, in this uh, last example, we were supposed to find the derivative at a specific point. Um, so far, I just found the derivative in terms of x and y. Uh, now I need to evaluate at uh, the point 1, 1. Uh, so we have dy dx was equal to 2x e to the 1 minus y. So plugging in 1 for both x and y, we have 2e to the 0 divided by uh, 4 times y. So plugging in 1 for y, we have 4 uh, plus x squared e to the 1 minus y. That becomes 1 times e to the 0. Uh, but now e to the 0 is 1. So I've got 2 over 4 plus 1, or 2 fifths. All right. Um, so let's look at this next one. Uh, in our next problem, we're asked for the equation of the tangent line uh, to the curve defined by uh, 4x minus x times y plus y cubed is 4 at the point 1, 1. 
and then we want to express our answer in slope-intercept form. Um, so again, to find the equation of a line, we need two things. We need a point on the line, uh, which we're given, the point 1, 1, and we need the slope of the line. Uh, now we know that the slope of our tangent line to the curve is the derivative, dy dx. So uh, for our equation, uh, which uh, defines y implicitly in terms of x, we have to use implicit differentiation. So again, differentiating uh, with respect to the variable x, let's see what we have. Um, so our first term on the left-hand side, 4x, has a derivative of 4. Then we're subtracting, we have an x times y. So to differentiate x times y, a product, we're going to have to use the product rule. Uh, so the first part of the product rule is the derivative of our first function, uh, which is x. So we've got the derivative of x is 1 times the second factor, y. And then we add our first function, left alone x, times the derivative of y, which we're calling dy dx. And then on the end, we have a y cubed. Uh, so differentiating using the chain rule, we have 3y squared. But because y is a function of x, we have to multiply on the end by the derivative of that inner function. That is the derivative of y with respect to x. And then this is equal to the derivative of uh, the right-hand side, 4, is 0. The derivative of any constant is 0. Um, so now uh, we can uh, solve or try to solve for dy dx explicitly. Um, so simplifying a little, we have 4 minus y minus x times dy dx uh, plus 3y squared dy dx is equal to 0. So all of the terms involving my derivative, dy dx, I'm going to uh, put on one side of the equation. And then everything else, this 4 minus y, I might move to the right-hand side of my equation. So on the left-hand side, we have a negative x dy dx plus 3y squared dy dx. And that's equal to... Uh, well, subtracting 4 minus y from both sides uh, or adding y to both sides and subtracting 4 from both sides, uh, we get y minus 4. So on the left-hand side, if I factor out a dy dx, I'm left with negative x plus 3y squared. That's equal to y minus 4. So the derivative of y with respect to x is y minus 4 divided by negative x plus 3y squared. So now that I've found my derivative, I need to evaluate it at the point of interest, which we were given uh, in the problem is the point 1, 1. So here, let's say at the point 1, 1, our derivative dy dx, which is the slope of the tangent line, uh, would be 1 minus 4 divided by negative 1 plus 3. So that's negative 3 divided by 2, or negative 3 halves. So finally, uh, once we have the slope of our tangent line and we have the point that it passes through, we can use the point-slope form for the equation of a line. And we have y minus 1 is equal to negative 3 halves times x minus 1. So y minus 1 is equal to negative 3 halves x plus 3 halves. And solving for y, if we add 1 to both sides, uh, we have negative 3 halves x uh, plus 3 halves plus 1 would give us 5 halves. All right. 
So let's look at some other ones, uh, maybe some applications of implicit differentiation. Uh, so in this next example, uh, we are told that a food truck owner has approximated the demand for tacos uh, by the following equation, where P is the price in dollars and Q is the quantity demanded in hundreds. So we're told in part A to use implicit differentiation uh, in order to find the derivative of Q with respect to P. So we're looking for the derivative of Q with respect to P. That is the rate at which the quantity demanded is changing uh, with respect to a change in the price. So here we're treating P as our variable uh, or as our independent variable and Q is the dependent variable. So we're going to differentiate uh, with respect to the price, uh, P. And let's see what we have. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have 10 P. So the derivative with respect to P is simply 10. And then plus, uh, we've got 3q squared, uh, but really we should think about this as 3 times q, which is a function of price squared. So we're going to use the chain rule to take our derivative, and we're going to have 6 times the quantity to the first power, and then we're multiplying by the derivative of uh, the quantity with respect to price, that is dq over dp. And this is equal to, on the right hand side, uh, we had a 75, the derivative of any constant is zero. So now solving, uh, we have 6q times the derivative of q with respect to p is negative 10. So the derivative of quantity with respect to price is negative 10 divided by 6q, or uh, negative 5 over 3q. All right. Um, so now that we've found this expression, uh, in part b, we're asked to find the derivative of q with respect to p uh, when the demand is 300 tacos. All right. Um, so here we're told uh, that Q, the quantity demanded, uh, was 300 tacos. But remember that here Q is the quantity demanded measured in hundreds. So if we have 300 tacos demanded, that means that Q is 3 uh, in units of 100. So here Q is equal to 3. Uh, and so using our result from part A, the derivative of quantity with respect to uh, price is negative 5 divided by uh, 3 times Q, which was 3. So that is negative 5 ninths. Um, And so uh, in our uh, interpretation, uh, we could say, well, if the um, quantity demanded is 300, then uh, the rate at which the quantity demanded uh, is changing with respect to price uh, would be that it is decreasing, since we had a negative value for the derivative, uh, at a rate of 5 ninths. Um, uh, which would be measured in hundreds of tacos per uh, change in uh, the um, price, so per dollar. Uh, so for our last example, uh, we've got the following. A baseball team uh, finds that the relationship between uh, the amount A in thousands of dollars 
uh, spent on pop-up ads on a popular search engine and the amount of online sales, S, uh, measured in thousands uh, of team paraphernalia can be approximated by uh, S to the fourth is equal to 16A cubed. Um, so we're supposed to, in part A, find the sales uh, when the team is spending $1,000. Um, so here, the amount spent was $1,000, but A was being measured in thousands. So 1,000 would mean that A is equal to 1. Um, so substituting A equals 1 into our equation, we have S to the fourth is equal to 16 times 1 cubed. Um, so taking the fourth root of both sides, we would have S is equal to 2. Uh, now recall that S was being measured in uh, thousands of dollars. Um, so if uh, the spending on ads is a thousand dollars, um, the uh, online sales will be uh, $2,000 since S was equal to two. All right. Uh, now in part B, we're asked to find the rate of change of sales with respect to advertising. Uh, when the team is spending $1,000 on advertising, and then interpret our answer. Um, so the rate of change of sales would be the derivative of uh, sales uh, with respect to advertising. So that is with respect to A. This is the quantity we're looking for. Um, so taking our equation, S to the fourth, uh, t uh, is equal to 16A cubed, and keeping in mind that uh, S is a function of A, since it depends on A, then we want to differentiate both sides with respect to A. So on the left-hand side, we're going to have 4S to the third times the derivative of the inside function. That is the derivative of S with respect to A. And this is equal to, on our right-hand side, uh, we have a, a 48 a squared. So solving for ds over dA, we have 48a squared divided by 4s cubed, or taking the 48 divided by 4, uh, we're left with 12a squared over s cubed. Uh, now we're told here uh, that the team is spending $1,000 on advertising. So the value of A is equal to 1, 1,000. Um, now to find our derivative, well, we have A, but we also need S. So let's think about how we can find S if A is equal to 1. Well, that's what we found in part A. When A was equal to 1, we found S is equal to 2 by substituting into our equation. So here A is 1. We already found the corresponding sales, uh, or online sales would be $2,000 or S equals 2. So substituting these values into our derivative, we have 12 times 1 squared uh, divided by 2 cubed, which is 8. Uh, so dividing the numerator and denominator through by 4, uh, we would have 3 halves. Um, so here, in interpretation, we could say uh, that online sales are increasing at a rate of three halves, or 1.5 uh, thousand uh, per thousand spent on um, advertising. 
or on pop-up ads. Okay.